Hey guys, it's Ethan from Zimmer Labs, and this is a Adcom GFA 5500 two-channel stereo amplifier. Um, it is something that I customized, as you guys can see, by putting some analog view meters into. Uh, it's the reason I did it was because personally, I've always really loved just the look of the twin view meters on you know, high-end audio equipment. The problem is that there aren't a lot of them out there. You don't see too many, you don't see any receivers really at all with view meters. Um, you only find really amplifiers with them. And the only amplifiers that have them that are worth owning are, you know, Macintoshes and maybe, maybe one of the older Integras, but definitely the uh, the original Integra Grand Integra M501, but that's good luck finding one. And if you do, it's going to be five grand plus shipping. Shipping's probably going to be another three, four, five hundred dollars, something like that. And it's going to be a vintage piece, thirty something years old probably. So you never know what shape it's going to be in. Probably going to end up having to to restore it. Um, the other options are like. A, an Ankyo M504 or an Integra 5030 or Integra 5060 but those to be perfectly honest the amplifier sections in those just aren't all that great I mean compared to other amplifiers that are more prevalent these days and you know compared to the amplifiers that are in the high-end audio equipment that I typically like to use like my surround sound is an NAD or a BNK or um, maybe an uh, Integra, but you know the amplifier in those are, are going to absolutely crush the amplifiers in the M504. So it's really it's kind of a trade-off. You don't want to have a crappy amplifier just so you can have some view meters, but you want to have some view meters and you want to have a nice amplifier. So since the only real option is to spend 5000 bucks on a Macintosh or a M501 Grand Integra, which you probably can't find, it seemed to me the only real way to get around the issue is to do it myself. So I present you, I give you the Adcom GFA5500 with these dual analog view meters that I put in myself. It's not a real hard job. You just have to machine the front plate out so that it's got slots for the two view meters to go into, and then you have to pick out your favorite view meter of choice. These uh, meters that I installed here are the uh, the meters that come in the Integra M5009, uh, which is another actually another really good choice as far as uh, view meter amplifier. But again, you're talking three, four, five thousand bucks for that guy as well. This Adcom I picked up for, I think it was 800, 900. Um, was quite a bit more back in the day when it was made, but you know, I think it, it's about a 10 year old amplifier. It's not too old, but it's not brand new. Uh, but it's been fully restored and it's, you know, it's a really good amplifier. As far as these things go, this up here on the left, as you can see, this is what it uh, originally looked like just a flat um, striped front faceplate and this is the rear uh, rear end of it so it's just RCA inputs fuses on all the different lines um, and banana plugs for speaker outputs but you'll notice here's here's the important part power consumption on this guy is 1440 watts and that's the kind of thing you want to really look at um, and also this the main AC power fuse is 12 amps so really at the end of the day this is a 12 amp 1440 watt amplifier I mean you're not actually going to see that kind of power out of it but that gives you an idea of really how much power this guy has at its fingertips if you had a Integra Onkyo M504 here it would be 400 watts maximum on the back, not 1440. Um, so that's a huge difference. 
the actual rated power on this guy is 250 watts per channel at 8 ohms, uh, 350 watts per channel at 4 ohms, and that's not dynamic wattage. That's RMS, you know, genuine, for real, real world power. So this is a for real, real world power amplifier of 500 to 700 and, no, 500 to 700 watts, which is a real heavy duty, for real, legitimate amplifier. And, you know, when you hook it up to speakers, you can tell, you can hear the difference immediately. It's just, it's got a whole lot more punch. It's got a whole lot more headroom. But, as you guys could see from that original picture, it's kind of bland to look at. So, once I slap these view meters in there, I think it looks really a whole lot better now. Um, let's fire up a track that really kind of shows off the view meters. So there's a good, a good track that was uh, Dispatch, Hold My Hand, uh, great band, great song, um, but really a good um, example of, you know, sudden jumps as far as the needles 
jumping around and also showing off the different stereo tracks and the, the two needles kind of doing different things. Um, there's a lot of a lot of music out there these days, especially for the most part. It's when they call it stereo, it's really just you know it's glorified mono. There's really the same thing happening on both sides. But if you listen to stuff that's a little bit older, you'll see a lot more stereo that's genuinely got different things going on on both sides. This is Marshall Tucker Band. See the left channel is where the guitar is. good example. Um, let's quickly take you guys under the hood. Um, I'm actually going to leave the power on. Obviously, don't, don't mess with any electronics with the power still on at home. Um, this is something you want to leave to the professionals, especially when you're talking about a receiver and amplifier. See those capacitors back there? Those guys have, even with the power off, those guys have a lot of juice saved in them and can blow your hand right off. Um, and then this massive toroidal transformer right here has a whole ton of juice going into it right now. It's 120 volts, 110 volts, so it's not like the world's most deadly catch or anything. It's not 220, but still, it'll it's definitely going to be something that'll hurt you. Um, but what we've got here, if, if you guys are familiar with the inside of one of these, there's actually quite a quite a bit of empty space. So what I did was I mounted this power transformer right there, and that's where the power supply to the driver board for the view meters comes from, which comes up to here, and this is the driver board. Which is kind of cool because it's got just a little tiny red light which you can see through the top just gives it a little bit of added cool technology look you know is this is not a real high-tech amplifier this is a very traditional classic old-school type of class D push-pull amplifier uh, but you know, you put a little bit of extra electronics and an LED in there and it looks good. Um, but what we've got here is wires to the LEDs and wires to the view meters, wires to the power, and then wires that go to the um, audio source, which connects up back here. You can either connect it up at the speaker terminals or the RCA terminals. It just depends how you want to do it. Um, the sensitivity on the view meters will change depending on where you connect them. Additionally, this is a nice driver board because it gives you, right here, this little blue box is a LED brightness controller. And then back here, these two pots, little two blue boxes, those are the sensitivity controllers for the view meters. So you can take a small Phillips head screwdriver and just 
turn the knobs on top of them to adjust the sensitivity and the brightness on the view meters. Um, which is nice because you may want them to dance a little bit more or when you install them, you know, these are, these are watt meters. So you do actually want them to be accurate, not just look good. So for this guy, because it's a 250 to 350 watt per channel amplifier, if you install these view meters into a 100 watt per channel amplifier, you're going to have to adjust the sensitivity kind of drastically if you want to make them accurate. As this goes up to just about 300 watts. Actually, man, it might be even be 400 right there because it, it's exponential in the, in the amount. Once the needle gets up to here, that's 100. It only takes to there to get to 200, so that's probably 400 right there. Which is actually perfect for this amplifier because this amplifier can actually touch 400 watts per channel. So these meters are just absolutely ideal for it. Um, not to mention my personal, my personal favorite as far as aesthetics go. Uh, the other thing that I did that is important is you'll see that the needles are glowing a nice bright red. And that was something that I had to do because the needles that came with these meters were just, uh, they were white, but they didn't uh, reflect or collect light at all. They, uh, they were a glossy white, which just isn't going to work. So what I did was I took some um, highly reflective, semi-fluorescent red uh, ink and inked the two needles. So now, as you guys can see, they really catch the, the light from the LEDs and really jump out at you. I mean, you can see them from across the room. Uh, and the LEDs, the brightness on these view meters is not turned up even halfway. You can crank the, the brightness up a lot more if you like. This is just my personal favorite look as far as it goes. I like the, you know, the background lighting to be kind of low dim and kind of mood lighting, if you will. Um, so yeah, I guess that's just about it, really. It's a pretty short video, but I wanted to share this with you guys because I'm pretty happy with how it came out, and it's a good way to get view meters into your system at the same time as keeping a good amplifier and not having to add an additional component that doesn't do anything except for have view meters or having to add an amplifier that's kind of a piece of crap just to get view meters or have to spend five you know five grand to get view meters you know you guys can pick up an adcom or another really you know high-end amplifier for 500 to a thousand bucks out there somewhere you can add your own view meters and now you've got something that's I'm not gonna say it's on the same level as a high-end Macintosh but it's pretty close um, and it's certainly on the same level as like the uh, the Onkyo Integra 5009. I mean, this guy's probably got more power than that. This is a uh, it's a big amp, real heavy, real powerful, no joke amplifier. So, you know, the whole thing is significantly more cost uh, cost effective than doing it the other way. Plus, maybe my other favorite thing about this guy is when you turn it off, it's got a genuine actual power switch. So now that goes off, and this is no longer sucking up electricity. It's really, truly turned off. Um, and it's really well built, you know? Solid steel all around, and then aluminum and aluminum solid for the heat sinks and for the front. Well, I think that's it. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned, more to come.